Welcome back. In the 15 days since those four University of Idaho students were stabbed to death, the police say that they've collected 113 pieces of evidence from that house. But it might be something that they haven't found that ends up cracking the case, and that's the murder weapon, the knife that was used to kill those kids as they slept. And while they may not have it in hand, they sure do know a lot about it. Publicly, they've called it a fixed blade, which, you know, pretty much describes every single knife that has a blade that doesn't bend. <laughs> but we got more information from a local business owner who said that police asked him about a K-Bar knife. K-Bar is a company that has been making knives since 1898. Uh, it sells several large military-style knives in various shapes and sizes. Sometimes they're called Rambo knives, and that's because of the movie makers that redesigned the K-Bar to have a really scary-looking serrated edge on the top. And Sylvester Stallone's character used a version of that knife, right there, you can see it, um, in the Rambo movies. So I want to show you something specific. This is the K-Bar knife that U.S. Marines are issued. I'm going to sort of hold it up so you can see it really well. But I want you to pay specific attention to the top here. This is very smooth along the top. I can run my hand along it. It's, it's dull. It's flat. Um, there's no serrated edge on this. But if you took this United States um, Marine Corps uh, issue knife and you added that Rambo fashionable serrated part of the top that makes it look really, really scary, that's where you would have the Hollywood looking knife, right? And it is not 100% that that's the knife that was used in the killings. It's not 100% that the serrated edge top was what was used in the killings. It's getting a lot of traction on, online in the media that it was a Rambo knife, but it may not have been. It may have been something completely different. And it's very helpful to know that information in the uh, investigation because if the killer didn't use a run-of-the-mill kitchen knife or an extremely common hunting knife in that region, it stands to reason the police would probably have a better chance of trying to uh, find the individual through the fingerprint of the knife. Now, that sounds weird, but I want to bring in Dave Ellis. He's an expert bladesmith. He's a dealer of world-class custom knives, and he's been called as an expert witness in multiple knife-related trials. He's also the founder of Exquisite Knives. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for being here. So one of the things I find fascinating is that the media kind of ran rampant with the Rambo-style knife because a shopkeeper led most people to believe that that's what the police were asking him if he'd, if he'd sold. We're not 100% sure if that's true, but I do want to ask you this. A Rambo-style knife with the serrated edge up here is it's sort of not functional for people who hunt and fish. It's not what they would necessarily use uh, as a functional tool, you know, in, in pursuit of hunting and fishing. So it's probably more likely that a Rambo-style knife with the serrated edge is not as common as we all think up there. Well, Ashley, I appreciate you having me. And uh, Rambo knives have kind of taken on a generic term. Uh, most any large, uh, wicked-looking knife has been called a Rambo knife. A K-Bar knife really is not a Rambo type knife. Uh, the first two Rambo movie knives were made by a fella named Jimmy Lyle, and it was based on a survivalist tool. It had a hollow handle to keep fishing gear, perhaps matches and such. And as you said, it had a saw blade top on it. A K-Bar is a totally different instrument. A K-Bar came, it, it, it was a permutation of what they called the Mark I, which was used in World War I. It was a combat knife, but it also had a set of brass knuckles built into it, so it was very unwieldy. So originally, the U.S. Marine Corps used the original K-Bar. They called it the Mark I. Eventually, uh, the Navy picked up the Mark I, but they're, they're a totally different animal. Uh, the K-Bar has a stacked leather washer. It typically has a 1095 high-carbon steel blade. It also has what's known as a fuller ground into the blade to lighten it, which is that little ridge across the front and the back of the blade. So it's a clip point fighter. Yes, please. Can I ask you this? Um, at first, I, I sort of thought, well, good luck. You know, good luck finding uh, a killer amongst thousands and thousands of people up there who are hunting and fishing all the time with these kinds of weapons, until it was described to me that Rambo-style knives with that serrated top um, are not necessarily what hunters and fishermen would use. It's more like what you would pose with on Instagram. It's a fetish-style knife. It's sort of a, it's a macho thing. It's, it's more for somebody who's kind of into knives, not so much the utilitarian aspect of the knives, which t t changes the profile of who might have used a Rambo-style knife 
to kill someone, doesn't it? I would agree totally. Uh, a lot of them are fantasy type knives. Overseas, there there have been so many copies of the quote Rambo knife end of quotes. Uh, but yes, from a functional standpoint, typically a fisherman or a hunter is not carrying a survival tool. They may have a hatchet, they may have a saw, they may have a knife. Whereas when you look at something like a K-bar, it really is a, a combat style knife. It's not a hunting knife. Uh, sure, you could probably uh, chop kindling with it, but but it, 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 it's efficiently made for one thing. I mean, it has the main sharp edge, and then it has what's known as a clip, which is probably the front third of the top, and that's also right. sharpened. It's a very violent weapon, whether in a slashing or a stabbing motion. But with a stack leather washer, you could grip it even if your hands are sweaty or bloody. And again, to, to, to immediately call it a makes Rambo sense. knife makes people jump to conclusions. Sure. And uh, of course, the, the K-bar would make a lot more sense to me because to be honest with you, uh, growing up as a kid, I used a K-bar as a throwing knife. They, they threw wonderfully. You could find them in any, uh, most any, uh, Army, Navy surplus stores, most of the, uh, the hardware stores carry very them. Common. It's a very yeah. common tool, and it really hasn't at, changed much since at, the 40s. Sure, and you can buy them for, you know, 25 bucks sometimes uh, online as well. Dave Ellis, thank you so much. Really appreciate your wisdom on this, and I'd like to have you back when my we learn pleasure. a little bit more about the murder weapon. Meantime, I want to bring thank in Chris Wecker, who is the former... Yeah, my pleasure. I want to bring in Chris Wecker, who's the former assistant director of the FBI Criminal Investigations Unit. Chris, I thought of you when I learned this notion of what, um, you know, Dave just called fantasy knives. There's a difference between somebody who uses a blade like this, which you actually could use, you know, hunting or, or fishing, or those fantasy knives that are real showy. And it made me think that would be a real boon to an investigator if a showy knife was used, because then you could go down the popcorn trail of social media and who might be showing off their fancy, scary knife and who might also have links to the victims. Yeah, the other thing is gun shows. I mean, there, there's a lot of places you can get this, what, what that was just referenced as the K-bar knife. I think I, I agree with him. I think the other knife type knife that uh, described as the Rambo knife is is a little bit harder to get your hands on. It's got a serrated edge because it, you use that to saw. Um, it's a survivalist kind of knife. So, you know, there's there are there are a lot of leads here. This is is one of very a, a bunch of different types of leads they can follow up on. And, and I'm sure they've got a team working on this type of lead, especially the murder weapon. I, I find I'd be incredulous if they weren't checking these websites out where you can get these types of knives or the gun shows or the gun shops or the specialty shops where you can actually put your hands on these knives. That K-bar knife is, is, is a killing knife. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it weren't the, the K-bar knife, but it was more the Rambo knife with the serrated edge, that the, the investigators would know right away after the coroner had a look and the ME had a look. They would know the wound pattern and they would know what kind of knife they're looking for, right? I, th I would think so, forensically, because the K-bar, I'm sorry, the Rambo knife, or what's being described as the Rambo knife, has a serrated edge on it. Again, it, that's for sawing things. And I would think that the, the, the fine part of the blade in is in contrast to the serrated part of the blade, and you could identify that type of wound uh, from a forensic standpoint. Okay, I have a bunch more questions for you, but I have to fit in a break. So, Chris, can you stay with me over the break? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. That's when we're going to uh, take a new look at an old prank. This is hard to look at. Um, this is an old and cruel and grisly prank that may have been much more than that. Back in 2017, somebody left dead and mutilated coyotes at fraternity and sorority houses on this campus, and police never found out who. But two of the quadruple murder victims were members of a sorority that was targeted. Could this at all be related? That story's next.